Today we're going to talk about how to achieve ideal stability in total hip arthroplasty, discussing cup positioning and joint offset. Uh, as disclosures, we can see here, and uh, one of them pertains to this talk. So as an introduction, instability after total hip arthroplasty, it's devastating. And to just call it instability minimizes uh, what the patient actually goes through. It's quite traumatic, obviously. So surgeons before me and all of us are trying to look for ways to address stability in total hip arthroplasty. Uh, the safe zones were originally introduced. Uh, we've increased head size. We've changed the soft tissue, uh, tried to repair that. We've tried elevated liners, uh, dual mobility liners. We've changed the prostheses we use. And then, of course, we've looked at different approaches. So looking at what is our problem with stability and despite our best efforts we still suffer from outliers uh, if we look at my last 60 anteriors where i did 30 by conventional manner and 30 uh, with a hip aligned navigation we can see that outliers even in uh, as we progress through our career still exist multiple studies have shown significant number of outliers and we can see that with the hip aligned technology or with other uh, technologies we definitely decrease the number of outliers now even in changing around our prostheses, we've published in the past, past on looking at uh, whether or not these larger heads had decreased impingement, and they certainly have not. Uh, in this study, we showed that 28, 32, 36 millimeter line, uh, heads uh, had about the same rate of impingement. So there's something else going on that we must consider. And so now we know through the work of Dr. Dorr, Dr. Pajorczyk, uh, and Rand Schwarzkopf that the spine plays a very important role in hip stability. And if patients have a stiff spine or a change in their spinal pelvic balance, we need to adjust where the cup is so that we don't end up with impingement and subsequent dislocation. Uh, again, uh, looking at the way the spine moves, we need to be measuring and looking not just to put it in the safe zones we had talked about before, but we need to know exactly where to put the cup. And then obviously the challenge is getting it there accurately every single time. Now there's other things to consider. And so with the help of Dr. Dorchek and Schwarzkopf, among others, uh, we've got some, some guidance on where we should be putting this. Uh, and then we need to get it there accurately every time. Uh, we must be recreating the leg length, uh, putting them back where they belong, and we must be recreating the combined offset, as you can see measured here. Uh, and then we should use appropriate implants to achieve these goals. Um, so in the overview of this talk, we're going to look at addressing instability through proper cup positioning, uh, restoration of the leg length, and then what is combined joint offset and how should we be restoring it. We'll look at how to achieve perfection. We'll look at intraoperative stability testing with a video on what I do and the different things we can do. And then talk about how my practice has changed since using this technology or technology in general. So we saw this grouping earlier and we originally again talked about safe zones, 40 degrees of abduction, 20 degrees of antiversion. And we now know that that's not for everyone. Uh, the way the spine is, the way the, the, the pelvis, uh, if it's fused in one position or another, we have to change the cup to accommodate for that. Um, so in terms of our cup placement, most of us will template right along the uh, teardrop. And we do that for a couple of reasons. One is a biomechanical reason in terms of getting the center rotation of the hip over the foot. And another is just to achieve that porous bony uh, uh, bleeding bone uh, to get good bony end growth. Uh, cup orientation, again, we talked about the zones. We talked about that, and you know, if we see in this patient, we know that this patient is going to have a different spinal pelvic balance, and we're going to have to change the orientation of the cup. You can see with her, I put her basically in neutral position uh, because that's where she needed to be to keep stability. Uh, talking now not about cup uh, placement, but about restoring the leg length. Why do we need to restore the leg length? It's not just for having the patient uh, uh, feel more normal in terms of how long their legs are, but we know it plays a huge role in stability through both the static and dynamic stabilizers. We also know the proper tensioning of the muscles allow them to work better, feel more natural. So in some patients like this patient, we know we're not gonna be able to fully restore because they've adapted to this over a long period of time, uh, but still trying to properly tension those muscles. Uh, as you can see, I did here through templating and then subsequently navigation. Uh, we will need to put them back into a position both where we can try to get that offset, but give them a more natural feeling hip, knowing that we may not be able to give them the entire uh, leg length back, uh, obviously a preoperative discussion.
And then finally, the third component here of stability uh, on the major scale is going to be combined offset. There's a bunch of different ways to measure combined offset. One way is that I do it here, which is aligned straight up the pubic symphysis, straight up the, uh, the sacrum, and then measuring out from there to the center of the femoral canals. Uh, Dr. Dorr has described it in a little bit different way, but you need a static place on the pelvis and a static place on the femur so we can measure where the femur ended up. And that's the basis of this, is where the femur ends up relative to the pelvis. Uh, and, and there's a few different things we can consider in getting that back. And so one of, uh, there, there's three components to offset and restoring it. The first is the stem component. We'll talk about that first. And as you can see in this patient, she started with a pretty significant coxivera. She has a large offset. And through the stem placement, use of a uh, high offset, I was able to do that. And so we need to respect that whether we put the stem in varus or valgus and what stem neck angle we use is gonna affect the offset. And we wanna be able to give them that offset that they had before and that will keep their muscles properly tensioned along with their stabilizers. Um, the next thing to consider is the modular head components. These not only increase length, but we need to think of this as a three, four, five triangle, as you can see here. And for every bit of length we gain, we also gain some offset. And we can use these to our advantage in templating to prepare for where we're gonna put the patient with these plus or minus heads. So we should respect that component of combined offset as well. And then finally, as we alluded to earlier, we talked about cup position. And in terms of the cup, we know we're gonna be medializing the cup to try to get that good bony end growth. Uh, and then also to give a more biomechanically advantageous position to the center of the cup. Um, and so we need to respect that there's gonna be three to five millimeters of medialization. You can see here at the top, just a case, a case I did not too long ago, where I took an x-ray right when I put the reamer in before any reaming, and this is where the cup sat. And then the reamer medializes as I bring them down to the teardrop where I'm gonna get that good bleeding bone. We must be cognizant of this medialization as we plan for restoring the combined offset. And so how are we gonna achieve perfection? Well, obviously Dr. Salvati is a technically excellent surgeon, uh, but also he's done tons and tons of cases and we get better throughout our career. So one way of doing it is to do 10,000 cases. Uh, that obviously takes quite some time. Uh, we augment uh, our knowledge, which increases our wisdom with fluoroscopy. And back in 2016, I was using a lot of fluoroscopy as I performed my anterior hip replacements. Uh, and then as we move on, we introduce navigation. And now introducing navigation is one way to uh, increase your ability to use your tools uh, and then increase, as we saw earlier in my cases and we've seen in other published reports, uh, the, 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 the amount of those that are tight within the, the central zone of where we want it without having many outliers. So in terms of achieving perfection, uh, I am early in my career, but I've used a number of different technologies and I've found the HIPAA-line technology to offer me excellent accuracy. And it also has an advantageous no capital uh, upfront stuff uh, and uh, a low cost per case basis. I like that it's portable. It has intraoperative landmarks only, not requiring any preoperative imaging. And it flows easily in the OR because it is portable and doesn't require anything. I can add on cases and still use it. The Hippoline system works through placing two pins in the iliac crest. We use intraoperative landmarks, the two uh, ASIS, the pubic symphysis, and then a pin on the greater trochanter enter of the femur. Uh, and the uh, pelvic plane is established first and then length and now offset are established through registering the femur. We're gonna guide the cup into position using the tools that you already use. And so this system is agnostic. You can use it with any of your systems. And then it just attaches to the tools that you use every day. One thing I love about that is that it has, guide, it has allowed me to form a muscle memory with the tools that I routinely use. Uh, and so now I'm not using something different, but the exact same tools that I might use if this weren't available. Uh, this is what I see on the screen and you dial in where you want the cup to be and then it will show you through these small graphs uh, where you are. It also gives you the direct numbers as well. And I love that I can check and recheck uh, with this system. And then finally, as you can see here in this video. Ready. All right, so three long, three medium. 
And so as you can see here, I'm able to tell exactly where I am and I could change the head option or a high offset option and then test again if I needed to. And so that's the way the HIPAA-Align system works. Uh, and then it has augmented my intraoperative testing pretty significantly. Uh, obviously, as we'll see here, the first thing that I will have done is, is I'll have the hip reduced and I'm gonna feel as it's being reduced, I'm gonna feel how hard was that reduction. Uh, and then I'm gonna feel the soft tissue tension as well. The next test is gonna be where I drop the leg 45 degrees and begin to externally rotate. If I properly recreated the leg length and the offset, also place the cup in the appropriate position, then I'm going to be able to have that hip stay even though we're breaking those anterior precautions. And then finally, you would hear me in the video say, I want the mystery machine or my hip aligned system. And I'm gonna be able to test for the offset and the leg length to be sure I've recreated it. What's happened to me over the last uh, 40, 50, 60 cases using the hip aligned system is that I have uh, gotten a better feel for the implants that I use by using the, the, the hip align system, and it's now made me much more comfortable with the implants that I use. And so how has my intraoperative practice changed? Well, obviously I've had many changes, but using this technology to augment the tools that I use every single day has allowed me to better understand my tools, has allowed me to better understand the prostheses and what each of these changes will do through an accurate checking and being able to know immediately what it has done for me. It's allowed me to better rep respect the medialization of the cup as I'm reaming. And so what it's also done is it's allowed me to significantly reduce the amount of fluoro that I use. If we just look at my last 30 cases, you can see that I have used uh, a, a far less fluoroscopy in terms of seconds, six seconds versus 19 seconds in the same period of time, uh, and then far less fluoroscopy dose. Another very important thing is that my team has rapidly become accustomed to this system, and I'm even time faster with the hip align than I am without it. And I think that's because I'm not pulling in fluoro uh, and then just becoming more comfortable not changing things around as much once I get the numbers. And then finally, my numbers. So if we look at where I wanted to be or where I thought I was compared with post-operative measurements, I'm significantly more accurate in all four categories with the hip align system uh, than I am without. Uh, probably the biggest difference you'll see here is both antiversion and offset. Uh, I'm up to 20 millimeters off in offset uh, without even realizing it uh, without the hip align system. And so the hip align system has markedly decreased uh, my, my uh, outliers or, or markedly increase my accuracy in offset. And then all of these metrics, you can see within a degree on abduction, 2 to 2.4 degrees on antiversion. But again, as we saw earlier, a huge difference is the, the number or lack thereof of outliers when I use this technology. So in conclusion, stability in total hip arthroplasty is complex, dependent on multiple factors. And as we begin to appreciate all of the relationships of the spine and the hip, we need to know that we can put the cup where we want it or where the, uh, the, the, the experts who have helped us out in learning where to put it uh, want us to put it and we should be putting it. We have the ability to accurately restore and improve leg length and offset. And then finally, there's no need for preoperative imaging. There can be, uh, uh, it can be used only with intraoperative landmarks, which is uh, uh, extremely valuable and it's just as accurate as other uh, technologies. And then these numbers won't lie. So if we look, uh, we can see that when I was starting to put in the pins, it's about 757. I'm putting in the cup at 826. And then right around 850, I'm finishing my final all implants in uh, testing with the HIPAA system. So timestamps won't lie. And we can see that uh, this is a very efficient system, uh, allowing me not to take as many x-rays and trust what I've done uh, with high accuracy. I appreciate your time today and uh, look forward to talking to you guys about uh, all the different ways we can make ourselves better.